Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a locus problem. We have real part of z bar minus i equals 2 and we're going to be solving for z values. What does a locus problem mean or what does locus for complex mean in general? So basically for complex number equations a locus is a geometric curve formed by all points representing complex numbers that satisfy a given condition. What do I mean by that? It's kind of like a dictionary definition, right? So basically you have a complex number equation here. When you solve this complex number, you're gonna get a bunch of solutions. And all those solutions are going to form a curve. And that curve could be a line as well, obviously, is called a locus. Why is it important? because this basically tells you we have infinitely many solutions. It doesn't have to be, it could also be a point, which is a single solution. But in this case, let me tell you, you're going to have infinitely many solutions. For example, if you have something like the absolute value of z minus a number a equals r, this basically tells you, well, maybe instead of a, we should use a c, this represents a circle with center C and radius R. Such a nice way to express a circle, don't you think? And to find out the equation in standard form, you can replace Z with a complex number such as A plus BI. But A plus BI, even though it's the name of this channel, is not a good choice because this is a locus problem. We have to replace Z with x plus yi, so we can talk about the equation in terms of x and y coordinates, okay? So that's what we're going to do, and if you do that here, you're going to realize that this gives you the equation. Of course, uh, c is going to be another complex number, so you kind of have to replace it with maybe a plus bi, and in this case, a comma b is going to be the coordinates of the center, okay? I'm not going to get into the details, you can just do that by replacement. Let's go ahead and focus on our equation. So we have this type of equation where the real part of some complex number, the complex conjugate of that number, minus i is supposed to equal to. What kind of curve do you think the solutions to this equation are gonna form? Make a guess, and then what we're gonna do is we're going to check our work at the end, okay? Great, so let's go ahead and see how we can solve a problem like this. The solution is simple. Replace z with x plus y i. So, the million dollar question, maybe not the million dollar question, an easy question would be, if z is x plus y i, what is z bar? z bar is defined as the complex conjugate of z, which means when you add to z or multiply by z, you always get a real number. In that sense, it's unique. So, z bar is x minus y i if z is x plus y i. By the way, if you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos where I go over the basics. And if you like algebra, number theory, and trigonometry problems, go ahead and check out cyber math. Also consider becoming a member so you can support the channel even more. Great, so let's go ahead and substitute this into our equation. That gives us the real part of x minus yi minus i equals two. Now, what does the real part mean or RE mean, right? RE means the real part, IM means the imaginary part. A complex number has two parts. So consider a complex number in the complex plane and let's call this X comma Y for our purposes. So X would be the real part of our complex number and Y would be the imaginary part of our complex number, which is abbreviated by IM. Okay, and a real part is denoted by RE. So that's what it means here. But this complex number isn't X plus YI anymore. It is a different number. How do you know what it is? Well, you're going to go ahead and write in standard form. In other words, combine these two things and just write it as Y plus 1 as the coefficient of I. In this case, the imaginary part is going to be the opposite of y plus 1. So in other words, the real part of this number is, if you call this w, because z is a different number now, and 
So the real part of W is just going to be X because that's the part that is not multiplied by I. And the imaginary part of W is going to be the opposite of Y plus 1. You have to be careful. You have to take the minus sign, but do not include the I. That is the critical part because both the real part and the imaginary part are real numbers, which is kind of weird, right? But that's what it is. So you can also write this as negative y minus 1, by the way. Great. Now, what does this mean? Though? Why do we need the imaginary part? We don't, okay? But why did we write it? Just wanted to show you how to find it real quick. What we need to focus on is the real part because that's what the equation says. And it says that this is equal to 2. But we already know that the real part of this number is x. So this means x equals 2. Great. But you just said that this is a locus problem and there would be infinitely many solutions, but you only got one solution. Well, we're not solving an equation for real numbers and we're not solving a linear equation in x. It's different, right? x equals 2 may represent a single solution. In some cases, it can represent infinitely many solutions. And how can you tell? Notice that we haven't been given any information about the imaginary part of this complex number, were we? No. We don't know anything about the imaginary part. The only thing we have is the real part. So then we don't know what the imaginary part is going to be. In other words, it's arbitrary. So this means our number is x plus yi and its real part is 2. So you can basically write it as 2 plus yi since x is equal to 2, right? So this is your complex number and as y varies, you're going to have a different complex number every time. For example, if y is equal to 0, you're going to have y equals 2. I'm sorry, z equals 2, that's what I meant. z equals 2. If y is equal to 1, you're going to get z equals 2 plus i. And then if y is equal to, I don't know, 5, you're going to get z equals 2 plus 5i. So what do all these numbers have in common? If you said the real parts, you got it. So let's go ahead and see. We have 2 here as a complex number. It basically means 2 comma 0, right? And then we have the 2 plus i, which is 2 comma 1. And then we have the 2 plus 5i, which is 2 comma 5. Have you noticed that all these numbers are on the same vertical line, which is the locus, okay? Which is the curve, which in this case, it happens to be a straight line. But this would be the solution. So all our complex numbers, the solutions to this equation, the real part of z bar minus i equals 2, would be on this straight line, on this vertical line. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and... Bye-bye.